Uh, in the previous lecture, we had started looking at uh, what are called local maxima and local minima of uh, functions at a point. We uh, defined the notion of local maxima, local minima and we proved a theorem which gives us a necessary condition in terms of local maxima and minima. And this theorem said if f is a function uh, on an interval a b to r and c is a point in a b, then c and if, if c is a point of local maxima or minima and derivative exists, then f dash of c is equal to 0. So, we said this is a necessary condition that the condition that the derivative is equal to 0 is a necessary condition for the function to have a local maxima or minima at the point and this is provided the derivative exists. Uh, but let me uh, caution that this is uh, this theorem is only a necessary uh, this condition is only a necessary condition this may not be sufficient meaning that the converse of this uh, theorem need not hold. So, what does that mean? That means a function may be differentiable at a point the derivative may exist. But, the, but this point C may not be a point of local maxima or minima. Uh, you can wonder why this is happening. So, let me uh, sketch a graph for you and uh, you can always look for functions with that property. So, let us look at uh, this is a point C. At this point C, uh, the graph uh, the is differentiable and the tangent is horizontal. So, at this point the tangent is horizontal. What kind of a graph this function can have? For example, I can have a graph which goes like this, right? At this point it is and then it comes down. So, at this point the, the horizontal line is a tangent. That means, whether I go from the left side or from the right side. So, whether I am going like this, then this line is a tangent and this line also is a tangent if I am going from this side. That means, the left derivative and the right derivative exist and are uh, equal to 0. Um, if you wonder what uh, uh, exam a formula for this kind of a function, an example, look at the function f of x is equal to x cube. Right? So, try to see that at x is equal to 0, uh, f dash of x is equal to 3 x square equal to 0 at x is equal to 0, but x is equal to 0 is not a local maxima or minima. Because on the x cube when x is bigger than 0, uh, f of x is bigger than 0. So, immediately on the right side of 0 the function is positive. Uh, immediately on the left side of the function, the function is negative. So, at 0 uh, we cannot say that the value at 0 the value is 0 at 0 f of 0 is equal to 0. So, uh, 0 is a point of neither maximum nor minima even though the uh, even though the uh, tangent is horizontal. So, this uh, condition is only a necessary condition it is not always sufficient. But still it is a very useful thing, we will see it uh, soon. So, let us look at an example that uh, how is this uh, theorem used. So, let us look at the example of a function f of x which is equal to x square minus 4 x plus 5, x belonging to real line. So, this is a function which is defined for all values of the real line. So, this is a function f from r to r. So, let us uh, try to find out uh, uh, the behavior of this function. This first of all note that this is a polynomial function. So, f is differentiable f is differentiable at all points at uh, all points and this derivative f dash of x we can compute by looking at uh, uh, the uh, derivative theorems, it is a polynomial function. If you recall the derivative of polynomial function that is good enough or look at derivative of x square, it is 2 into the power x 2 minus 1 minus 4 x to the derivative is derivative of x is equal to uh, 1 so minus 4. So, derivative is equal to this. So, um, 
let, let us look at the point where f of def is x is 0, this implies that 2 x minus 4 is equal to 0 and that implies x is equal to 2. So, x is equal to 2 uh, is a possible point where the function can have a local maxima or a minima. So, let us note that this is a point 2. If I take a point x on the left side of it, so if x is less than 2, then what happens to the derivative? If x is less than 2, that means that is x minus 2 is less than 0. So, x minus 2 is less than 0. So, that means uh, the function is, so implies that f is strictly decreasing on the left of 2, so minus infinity to 2. In this interval, the function is strictly decreasing. And similarly, if we look at x bigger than 2, point on the right side of, uh, if I take a point here, then x will be bigger than 2, so x minus 2 will be positive, so function will be increasing. So, f is strictly increasing in uh, the interval 2 to infinity. Mind it, I am uh, purposefully writing uh, 2 to infinity because oh, 2 open because our theorem uh, about uh, uh, derivative being uh, bigger, derivative equal to 0 or uh, derivative bigger than 0 or less than 0 was applicable only for open intervals. So, but anyway, here the function is continuous. So, I can say even the closed interval is ok here because, because of continuity this will happen at the point 2 also. So, uh, f is strictly decreasing on minus 2 to uh, minus infinity to 0 and f is strictly increasing in uh, 2 to in, uh, infinity. So, uh, clearly uh, uh, f is uh, sloping down on the left of 2, sloping up on the right of 2. So, the function has a, a local uh, minima at the point x is equal to 2. So, let us uh, uh, have uh, this conclusion written down. So, x is bigger than 2. So, f dash of x is bigger than 0, x bigger than 2. So, it is increasing uh, on this side and decreasing on the left side. Uh, so, it is uh, decreasing on the left, increasing on the right. So, that says that uh, f has a local minimum at the point 2. So, that is how the derivative condition uh, uh, is used uh, in uh, analyzing whether the function has a local maxima or local minima at a point. So, this is uh, once again uh, at the point 2, it was decreasing and on the right side increasing. So, that is what uh, happened in our function. So, uh, Note that f is differentiable at the point 2 and at f dash of x is equal to 0. So, that is uh, happening. So, let us look at uh, an example that f of x is equal to 2 x cube plus 3 x square minus 12 x plus 4 when x is equal to. Now, let us differentiate this function and see this is a polynomial function once again. So, it is differentiable everywhere. So, what will be the derivative? Derivative of this will be derivative of the first term plus derivative of the second term plus derivative of the third term plus derivative of the last one. So, derivative of the first one gives you 3 times 2 into x square. So, that is 6 x square plus derivative of this term that is 2 power comes down. So, that is 6 x minus derivative of 12 x is minus 12. So, that is equal to and derivative of the constant function is 0. So, derivative of f of x 2 x cube plus 3 x square minus 12 x plus 4 is nothing but f dash of x is equal to 6 x square plus 6 x minus 12, which we can simplify as take 6 common. So, inside is x square plus x minus 2 and now factorize this uh, x square quadratic. So, you should know how to factorize the quadratic. So, this the factors here are uh, x plus 2 and x minus 1. So, uh, if you do not know how to factorize uh, quadratics or factorize cubics, uh, better revise uh, your knowledge so that you are able to solve problems. So, that means f dash of x is equal to 6 times x plus 2 
into x minus 1. So, now let us analyze when will this be uh, positive or negative. So, let us uh, look at the point this will this quantity product will be positive if both the terms are positive right. So, product of two terms is positive each, each one is positive. So, x plus 2 is bigger than 0 and x minus 1 is also bigger than 0. That means, x should be bigger than or equal to minus 2 and x should be less than or equal to uh, x should be x minus 1 should be bigger than 0. So, x should be bigger than y, uh, 1. So, that means, uh, the derivative will be bigger than or equal to 0. We want x bigger than minus 2 and x bigger than 1. So, this will be satisfied only when x is bigger than 1. So, derivative is bigger than or equal to 0 if x is bigger than or equal to 1. And when will this quantity be negative? So, either this is negative and this is positive or this is positive, uh, this is positive and this is negative and that will precisely. Uh, so, this is uh, we we'll looked at derivative positive and both terms are positive, but there is another possibility of derivative being positive when both terms are uh, negative product of negative into negative is also positive. So, x minus 2 is negative and x minus 1 also is negative that will give us the second uh, portion where the derivative is bigger than or equal to 0. So, <clears throat> that is precisely uh, saying that x plus 2 less than 0 and x minus 1 also less than or equal to 0. So, that gives you us the derivative is positive if x is less than minus 2. So, in the interval minus infinity to minus 2 and 1 to infinity uh, the derivative is positive. So, the function will be increasing in that interval. So, that both the cases uh, when the derivative is positive are put into this form then f dash of x is bigger than 0 when either x is less than minus 2 or bigger than 1. So, in this portion of the real line of the domain the function uh, derivative is positive. So, the function will be uh, a increasing function. On the remaining part that is in the interval minus 2 to 1, uh, one of the terms either this will be positive and that will be uh, negative or that will be negative and this positive. So, the product uh, will be a negative quantity. So, that uh, is shown here that if def dash of x will be less than or equal to 0 if this is positive and uh, this is uh, less than or equal to 0 or this is less than or equal to 0 and the other term x minus 1 is bigger than 0. So, that uh, gives us the domain where uh, f dash of x will be less than 0 if x is bigger than minus 2 and less than or equal to minus 1. So, this two put together give us a complete description of uh, uh, the function namely in the interval minus 2 to minus 1. Um, uh, in the interval minus 2 to minus uh, 1 uh, and the portions where x is less than minus 2 and uh, so we have analyzed uh, cases where in this portion of the uh, domain the function is strictly increasing and in this portion of the domain the function is strictly uh, decre uh, increasing uh, in the this portion of the function is uh, strictly decreasing so, um, what can you say about the points? Uh, uh, so, the points uh, which we have not really analyzed are the points x is equal to minus 2 and 1. See on the left of uh, minus 2, uh, on the left of minus 2 here, on the left of minus 2 the function is uh, strictly increasing and then it becomes decreasing. So, that means at the point x is equal to minus 2 the function has a local maximum and we if you look at the point 1 then on the right of 1 the function is increasing and uh, uh, is increasing on the right of 1 and decreasing on the left of 1 from this uh, uh, criteria. So, this conclusion. So, that means at the point uh, x is equal to 1 the function has a local minimum. So, all this can be put together. So, uh, where it is uh, so in this portion uh, the interval the function is decreasing. So, we can put uh, this together 
and f of dash of x is equal to 0 at the point minus 2 and mo equal to 1. So, all this information gives us uh, a um, conclusion that at the point x equal to minus 2 is the point of local maximum and x is equal to 1 is a point of local minimum. So, what we have done is uh, to analyze the points of local maximum or local minimum for a function like this example, we looked at the function and because our function was everywhere differentiable, we found the derivative and we look at the equation derivative f dash of x is equal to 0. Among all these points, we looked at the nature of the derivative uh, on the left and right of these points and made conclusions that minus 2 <coughs> is a point where the function has a local maximum and x is equal to 1 is a point where the function has a local minimum. So, just by, just by analyzing the first uh, the derivative of the function at a point. So, uh, further you can uh, look uh, one given the function, the, uh, we can compute the values of the function at the point minus 2 and minus 1. Uh, so, put x is equal to minus 2 in the equation of the function you get 24 and you put x is equal to 1 and simplify you will get equal to minus 3. So, that means what at the point minus 2 the function has a local maximum and the value of the local maxima is 24. So, this value at the point of local maximum is called the local maxima. And at the point x is equal to uh, 1, the function had uh, a local uh, minimum and the value of the local minimum is minus 3. So, uh, this information can be put together to sketch a graph of the function namely it uh, uh, Right. So, you can also find out, uh, so what are the points where uh, x is equal to 0, y equal to 4, the graph passes through all these points. So, uh, information what are the intercepts and so on. So, this is the point where the graph uh, 0 and 4, this is the graph where, um, where the graph cuts the y axis and x is equal to uh, minus 2. At this point, we found that the function has a local uh, maximum because on the left the derivative was strictly positive. So, function is increasing on the left side and on the right side the function is decreasing. So, this point gave us a, a conclusion that this must be the point of local maximum. And similarly at this point uh, uh, x is equal to 1, the value is 1 comma minus 3. On the left side of it the function was strictly uh, decreasing right and our analysis said it is strictly increasing on the right side. So, that is the graph. So, this point must be a point of local minimum. So, that is what. So, that uh, data is all uh, transferred into this picture and this is what we call as uh, the curve sketching or sketching the graph of the function. So, this is how calculus uh, is used to sketch the graph of a function. We have taken a very simple uh, uh, cubic equation and sketch the graph of it. If you uh, know a bit of uh, algebra and you know the, what is called the fundamental theorem of algebra, given a cubic it must have, uh, it can have uh, at the most three uh, real roots. Uh, it will have always a real root. So, in this case you can see that the graph of this function is actually cutting the x axis at 3 points. This is one point, this is the second point and this is the third point. So, this cubic has got 3 real roots. That one can actually prove uh, using the calculus tools exclusively. Uh, so, uh, this is how calculus uh, no, the properties of the derivative um, are used, exploited to uh, sketch, analyze the graph of a function. So, uh, in this graph uh, let us just note one thing, we have said this is the point of local maximum and this is the point of local minimum and you can see in between this point minus 2 and minus 1 and the graph is coming down right and then there is something happening at it, there is also a, a kind of uh, uh, nature of the function changes, the graph changes. It was, now it keeps on coming down, but 
then it has to go up in a nice way. So, at somewhere in between here, the nature of the function is changing. We will uh, analyze this more in more detail uh, at a later stage uh, in our lectures uh, that more detailed analysis of the function in the in between uh, this kind of a thing. Uh, what is that the turning of the function uh, that is called normally you can see you can feel that the curve was like this and at some point it has turned around like this. So, there has been some kind of inflection of the curve uh, we will analyze this uh, later on. Let us uh, look at uh, some uh, examples uh, of this uh, analysis uh, in our uh, say economics commerce. So, let us look at an example where the cost of building x floors in an office block requires the following. The cost of the land that is this amount that is a fixed amount. Okay. So, that is uh, uh, one normally uh, call that as the fixed cost that is the cost of the uh, land uh, that is a cost in any way whether you build or not you have to invest if you want to do something. So, this is the uh, uh, cost of the land and uh, the cost per floor building uh, the in that whatever is the structure that you are building uh, the cost per floor estimated is uh, 2 lakh rupees. So, this is the fixed cost, this is the cost per floor and you are building x flows. So, uh, based on this the cost rise per floor is 20,000 into x. If there is a uh, x floors are built then for that floor this much cost uh, may be the labor cost goes up or whatever it is this is given the cost rise per floor is 20,000 times x. So, uh, based on this data we uh, write down our uh, uh, cost function, but before that so the question is how many floors should be constructed so that the average cost per floor is minimum. So, that is the question one would like to uh, analyze for this kind of a scenario. So, how many floors should be constructed so that the average uh, cost per uh, floor is minimum. So, what we have to do uh, mathematically what is required is we find the average uh, cost um, function average cost as a function of x the number of floors you are constructing and for that function we need to find the minimum value. So, to do that first, first let us find out the average cost. So, the total cost for x floors so let us denote by Tcx total cost for x this is a fixed cost right plus this is the cost uh, which is uh, per floor rise okay. and this is the cost rise per floor and the cost per floor. So, this is the cost per floor. So, on one floor the cost is uh, 2 lakh. So, for x floors the cost will be this plus the cost rise per floor it is 20,000 x right. So, it will be 20,000 in x into x because x floors are being constructed. So, this is for that particular floor x the cost rise will be 20,000 x into x. So, that will be the cost rise. So, this is the cost rise uh, for uh, this is the total cost function given this data. So, from this we would like to find out uh, what is the minimum uh, for the average cost. Okay. So, this is the total cost. So, how from total how do you find the average by dividing. So, average is total cost divided by the number of floors that you have constructed. So, T total cost for x divided by x. So, that is equal to uh, this uh, equation right we have just got the constant we have just taken it out 10 to the power 4. So, average cost as a function of the number of floors constructed is the following. So, uh, as a uh, now to find out what is the minimum uh, what is the um, uh, what is x so that a, a c x is minimum. So, mathematically that is a question to be analyzed and for that this is uh, a polynomial function there is a denominator x, but 1 over x also we know is differentiable because the number of floors is always going to be 
bigger than 0, so that is no problem at all. So, derivative of this function a c x is nothing but 1 over x, so that is as same as x raised to the power minus 1. So, minus 1 into x raised to the power minus 1 minus 1 that is 2. So, 1800 divided by x square. So, minus 1800 divided by x square is the derivative of this. Derivative of 20 that is a constant function that is 0 plus derivative of 2x that is equal to 2. So, putting them uh, together what we get is derivative of uh, average cost function as a function of x the floors is equal to this. And to find minimum we should put uh, by that uh, necessary condition the derivative equal to 0. Once you put derivative equal to 0, this is equal to 0 and we have to solve that. So, solving that means 1800 plus 2 x square is equal to 0 that means x square is equal to 900. That means this gives us two values x is equal to plus minus 30, but the number of floors is to be has to be positive. So, we discard the negative value. So, x is equal to 30. So, for x is equal to 30 floors the cost uh, average cost will be uh, possibly minimum, but we have to check that is that so on the left of x is equal to 30 if we took 30 is the point we are analyzing. So, and the derivative uh, was equal to this. So, on the left of uh, x is equal to 30 the function uh, derivative is uh, uh, negative and on the right side of it the derivative is uh, positive. So, this together that, that comes from here. So, you can look at minus 1800 plus 2 x square if this is bigger than 0 so that means x square is uh, bigger than 900. So, x is bigger than or equal to 30. So, uh, uh, x is so for x less than 30 the, the on the left of it the derivative function is decreasing on the left of it and it is increasing on the uh, right side of it. So, uh, that means x is equal to 30 in fact is a point of local minimum. So, that we have verified see uh, the point is that just putting f dash of x is equal to 0 gives us the value 30, but that does not ensure that whether it is a point of local maxima or a local minima. So, we have to look at the nature of the derivative on the left and on the right of it to ascertain whether it is a point of local maxima or a local minima. And this says that uh, by that analysis that we have just now said says that it is decreasing on the left of uh, 30 and is increasing on the right of 30. So, that means what that means x is equal to 30 is indeed a point of local minimum. So, the conclusion is for this uh, uh, data the average cost will be minimum when the x is equal to uh, 30. So, uh, this is how calculus uh, tool of increasing, decreasing and local maximum and local minimum can be applied to analyze problems uh, in uh, economics, commerce and management. Um, so, we will look at uh, some more examples and uh, some more tools which will help us to analyze uh, this notion of local maxima and local minima in the next lecture. Thank you.